Ren is is she okay like she's not doing way great at the moment I am with my dog there we are I didn't see it coming I didn't know that there would be pirates but there are definitely there's definitely pirates I'm not mad about it at some points I was like Girl, why did you just do that? Why did you make things so hard for yourself? Hello, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be doing a fantasy reading vlog. I have several fantasy books that I've really been meaning to get through this summer, but I keep putting them off for whatever reason. Usually it's big book fear because I have two like chunky books I'm going to be reading in this vlog. I'm going to do it. Finally. I thought it'd be fun to kind of take you guys along on like my more specific thoughts about books. I'll try to keep it spoiler free, especially in the case of I have one sequel that I'm going to be reading, so I won't really talk about what that one's about, more like general themes. I have three books I'm going to be reading for this video. The first one is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I read The Poppy War in the beginning of this year and I really liked it. It wasn't a five star, but it was very good. I'm super excited to continue with the series because I've heard that the books just kind of get better and better as they go on. And I also need to like remember to continue on with series so that's my goal. The second book is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a Achilles and Patroclus retelling and sorry if you can hear my family talking <laughs> but this is a Achilles and Patroclus retelling in which they are gay lovers and apparently everyone's read this. It was massive on book talk and I have yet to read it even though I've owned it for over a year now so I'm finally gonna get to it I'm a little bit scared of this one mostly because of the hype. So all these fantasy books I've been scared to read. I think I was scared to read The Dragon Republic because I was afraid I wouldn't like it after reading Babel, which I didn't like. I'm scared to read this because it's so hyped. And I'm scared to read this because it's also really hyped and it's big. This is The Final Empire by Brendan Sanderson. It is the first book in the Mistborn series and I'm so excited to read this. I've read, I think, Skyward by Brendan Sanderson and Steelheart, I think that was him, but ne never read any sort of Cosmere novels. So this will be my first time and I'm just really excited. I think fantasy is a genre that I'm really leaning towards lately because I study English literature and I read a lot of literary fiction for my degree. So lately I've been kind of wanting to go out of that and read something that reminds me more of how I read when I was a kid. And fantasy really takes me back there um so i'm just very excited to be starting mistborn to be starting all of these books but yeah let's get into the vlog so i'm it's still me i just filmed the intro <laughs> um but i wanted to say i'm on page 44 of the dragon republic and so far so good basically the poppy war is about this girl named rin she lives in this fictional version of China. Basically the events of the Poppy War about the Second Sino-Japanese War that happened and this book and the next book are like fantastical retellings of the Chinese Civil War. So lots of war going on but this girl Rin grows up poor and she's an orphan that was taken in by this family that just treats her really badly and kind of just uses her as someone that works for them and when she is I think 16 she is told that she has to get married to this guy that she doesn't want to marry and to escape this she decides that she wants to take this test called the keiju which is a test that will allow you if you pass to get into military schools and work for the military so she literally puts in blood sweat and tears to studying for this test gets into the best school in the country and goes there but she faces discrimination because she's from the south and this place is in the north and people like get on each other about that she's training at this place she has a rival she's like finding it hard to fit in and then in the middle of when she's there a war actually starts and she has to fight in it and there's a fantasy element to this basically people can be shamans and they use opium to communicate with the gods and the gods will channel their powers through them but these powers can come to like mass destruction like very bad things we're talking like millions of people dying it's a very gruesome story but very good and very well done the first book definitely left off on a cliffhanger so i'm really excited to read this 
so far it's going really well i had, did have to read a summary online of what happened in the poppy war just to catch myself up things left off on a crazy note and ren is is she okay like she's not doing way great at the moment this basically the gods in these stories can really get in your head and like shamans are always said to burn bright and fast the god that possesses the person will usually make that person go crazy and kill themselves or a great number of people and so basically these people that are shamans work for this organization called the psych who assassinate people using their special powers and once you've kind of served you might be like 20 you might be 30 but you'll get put in this insane asylum thing and our main character is a shaman so she is kind of losing it and relying on opium i hope that doesn't give too much away about the story i think if you read the first book that's not a surprise i don't think it's a spoiler for this series but it's very interesting to see how addiction is impacting our character and how very extreme her addiction is i think it'll be interesting to see what lengths she's going to go to to make sure that she can get her fix of opium and it's already causing destruction for the people around her so yeah very interesting i'll update you guys when i'm a bit further on with the book hello so my family and i went on lots of errands today i got my nails done they look very nice and i was kind of just trying to read the dragon republic whenever i could but i haven't gotten very far obviously i'm like i think i said before i'm like 40 pages in but i changed into pajamas i am with my dog there we are and i'm gonna do some laundry and actually probably watch an episode of love island because i am almost at the end i think the episode i'm watching is the one right before the final just because i've been out and doing stuff all day and then i'll probably read a bit after after dinner but yeah just wanted to update you guys forget i did that <laughs> just want to update you guys and let me know if you guys want this to be more vlog style in terms of like me talking about everything i'm doing or just talking about books i'm reading books will be the main focus no matter what oh tapa sorry um books will be the main focus no matter what but if you want to see other things that I'm doing too, just let me know. Because I don't know how much of that to include. God, I'm obsessed with my nails. Anyway. <laughs> okay. But I will talk to you guys later. Everyone, scary. scary. How's you and Ella? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I have watched The Violin. The next episode I have to watch is the final. So I'm going to do that tomorrow and i'll watch the reunion too because it's out now i have my tea and i'm gonna read some of the dragon republic like, i think i'll update you guys when i'm further in i don't think i'll update you guys like every time i read because that would be too much <laughs> um so i think that for now this is at least this vlog is not gonna be like a what i'm doing in my life vlog it's just gonna be about the books because i have three books to cover and that would be way too long but yeah i'll let you know if there's interesting developments or anything like that okay this isn't a big update at all for the dragon republic because it's literally like an hour later and i have only read like 30 more pages there's pirates there's pirates in this and if you know me you know i love a pirate story so i'm very excited about it I didn't see it coming. I didn't know that there would be pirates. But there are definitely, there's definitely pirates. And I'm not mad about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll update you guys later. Hello, it is two days later. I didn't film it all yesterday because it was my birthday. But I did read a bit more of the Dragon Republic. There's not too much to report yet, but things are happening super quickly which is good we're getting right into the action and right into what seems like the main plot of the book but i have a feeling like this thing that we're working towards right now is just the catalyst for bigger things although it seems like 
the big thing right now. I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to say it without spoiling anything. Right now I'm gonna go to the beach and read more of this. I'll update you guys when I'm probably closer to halfway through. But so far this book has been really good, um, very intense. What I'm finding interesting is the discussion around addiction in this book about how addictions limit us and our ability to really function as much as we can as humans. And our main character is having to let go of things that aren't serving her. Um, she's having to do a lot of work like there was a lot of training that she did in the first novel and now she's having to go through more training because she's kind of lost her way a bit so it's interesting to see where our character is gonna go because I'm not exactly sure what sort of path she's going down in the first book it looked like she was gonna go down this like sort of darker path and her path is still dark but it's seeming a little bit better I don't know We'll see. I don't know if she's someone to root for or not. That's the thing I love about this is that the character is, the main character, Ren, is very complex and it's, you don't really know if you should necessarily root for her, although you understand why she is the way that she is. So I'll update you guys more when I'm like halfway through, but really liking it so far a lot. And I'm going to go read at the beach. So I'm about almost halfway through the Dragon Republic and I have some thoughts. I think I've found this with all of Kwong's books that I've read so far, but I'm not, I like the characters, but I don't feel like they're fully fleshed out. Our main character Rin is interesting because of her power and because people are trying to use that power. Like she's she's very powerful and that's interesting and the plot is interesting but I find that I don't really care about the characters in terms of I don't care if someone dies I don't care like if something really bad happens to them like I think this is a more plot driven book and I'm a character driven reader but the plot is super interesting so I do like it I'm not like in love with it but I am liking it we also have in this book a bit of a conversation about Americans and guns and Christianity, those are all things that are introduced in this book and I'm finding it super interesting. This is something Kwong does a lot, is talking about colonization and America viewing China as not civilized during the days of colonization and I'm finding that critique really interesting and really well done, which is Kwong, you know. At first I was reading this and I was like, oh wow, this is so different from her other books. And now I'm like, nah, it's, it's Kwong. But I think Kwong is an author that I do really like, but at the same time, yeah, the characters just she writes just don't really like do it for me completely. Another interesting thing is that Rin, our main character, is so powerful. So other people view her as an asset to use or a weapon. And there are some really interesting conversations in here about agency. Ren sometimes likes to have control over herself and what she does, and other times she really wants someone to control her and kind of use her body um, to do things because she's tired of having this power and having so much choice about what to do with it. And she wants, it's easier sometimes for someone just to tell her what to do. And I'm finding all of these things very interesting about this book. So I'll probably update you guys when I finish it, but I am liking it, not loving it, I guess is what I would say. But it is very interesting to talk about and to think about. So those are my, those are my feelings. Hello, I have finally finished The Dragon Republic and it was okay. It was fine. Um, I made a list of pros and cons. So I'm going to go through it because my feelings are complicated. It wasn't a bad book. When I was reading it, I didn't really want to ever pick it up. Like I would think about reading it and I'd be like, oh, I don't really want to. But then when I actually sat down and read it, I wanted to keep going. So a little confusing. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to take you through what, I, what I 
Ugh. I'm gonna take you through my thoughts. So, okay. For pros, we have it's unpredictable. Seriously, I had no idea what was gonna happen from one minute to the next. Like, no idea. No idea. Things would happen in this book that were just so out of pocket, so crazy, so random that it was actually great and i loved that unpredictability it kept things spicy and it kept things interesting and the plot was really good and moved forward really quickly another thing is that the plot is complex but it's also coherent like everything makes sense you just have to be paying attention and catch little things so it's smart writing it this is a, objectively it's a good book okay objectively it is Sorry if my hand is shaking. Another pro is Ren. Okay, our main character, she is stunning. She is fabulous. I like her. I struggle sometimes. Hello. I like her. Okay, I've been on the fence about it. I've been thinking like, maybe I don't really care about her, but I like her. I like her, you know, like she, she's unpredictable she's super like impulsive almost too impulsive to where at some points i was like girl why did you just do that why did you make things so hard for yourself but i like that we never know what's coming from her but that we also see her actions and they make sense so that's good and i like venka venka and um kite i like them cons neza Okay, am I supposed to like this guy that bullied her and was racist and classist? And like tease her for being poor? I'm sorry, no, I'm not doing that. So I don't know why he's somehow a love interest. Where is the romantic plot line? Why are we supposed to root for him? I don't know if I missed something, if I'm supposed to like him or feel sorry for him, but I don't really. So there's that. I also have a con as too much war. For me, this is a personal preference thing. Like, I just don't love stories that are all war, war, war. And then I think, why did I... It says war in the, ta in the name of the series. So that one's on me, okay? And I think maybe that's why this type of story won't be five stars for me. At least this one won't be. I have high hopes for The Burning God, okay? High hopes, and I'm gonna read it soon. My copy is in the UK. Another thing is that the characters didn't really feel super vivid to me. And I don't really know how to explain it. Like, obviously, Venka, Kate, um, Ren, I really like their characters. I kind of care about them. There are other members of the cast of characters like Baji or Suni that I didn't know anything about. It was like Baji, Suni, and Ramza, except for... Maybe Ramsa had a bit of a different personality, but they were all sort of the same to me. And and as a result, events that happen with their characters aren't very impactful. Like, I don't really, like, I hope they're doing well, you know, but I don't care about their storylines because they weren't given any characterization other than this is Ren's little army. So, I don't know. I have weird, like, mixed feelings about the characters. There's no one I would be like, oh my god, I'm in love with them. Closest to that feeling would be Rin and Benka. I think for me, the book is just a bit meh. And that's fine. That's fine. And I'm gonna have realistic hopes for the third one based on what type of reader I am. And now I'm gonna start The Song of Achilles. I will give you guys a proper synopsis when I'm like a little bit into it. But I'm excited to read this. I'm scared. I'm scared because of the hype. There's a lot of it. And that's why this has been sitting on my shelf for a year. So the time is now. Now is the time. I'll let you guys know when I've read some of it. Hello, so I have a bit of an update on Song of Achilles. I am about 140 pages in and I'm really liking it. I was so scared to pick this up. I think from the time that you saw the last clip versus now, it's been like three days because I just couldn't get over my fear <laughs> that it would be overhyped and I'd be disappointed in it. Because I was feeling a little bit slumpy after The Dragon Republic. It wasn't a bad book, but it just made me feel like I was in a slump a little bit. 
But this is really good. It took me about 50 pages to really get on board with it, but now I am. There's lots of interesting things going on here. It's set in a time where, you know, obviously women are not treated that well. There's lots of rape. Madeline Miller doesn't stray away from these topics, but I'm interested to see how like femininity and women are handled in this novel, especially as it centers to gay men. I wonder what the narrative around women's gonna be. So far, there's not much to say on that front. Um, but Madeline Miller's writing is just beautiful. It's beautiful. Sorry, let me tell you what this is about. So basically, this centers on a weak young boy named Patroclus, who is living in this world of heroes and very traditionally masculine views. The whole world is masculine and centered on concepts of how to be a strong man and heroes and all of that. He's raised by a father who's ashamed of him, so when he makes a mistake, he's exiled and is sent to live at this palace that Achilles and his father live at. At first he hates Achilles because he's everything that his father wants in a son and Patroclus is jealous, but they strike up an unlikely friendship and potentially more than that. I mean, we know it's more than that, but the Trojan War is brewing. So we're getting to a point now in the book where that is starting to come into play. And Achilles' mother is a nymph of the sea and is very controlling and doesn't like the two of them being together. So there's forces that seem like they're gonna drive them apart, but the writing is stunning. The book is stunning and I'm so excited to continue reading it. Okay, I'm gonna just kneel down because I can't think of anywhere else to prop up my phone, but I wanted to show you guys a part. Um, and Patroclus is talking about how he's starting to feel for Achilles. So this is what he says. As we swam or played or talked, a feeling would come. It was almost like fear in the way that it filled me, rising in my chest. It was almost like tears and how swiftly it came, but it was neither of those, buoyant where they were heavy, bright where they were dull. I had known contentment before, brief snatches of time in which I pursued solitary pleasure, skipping stones or dicing or dreaming. But in truth, it had been less a presence than an absence, a laying aside of dread. My father was not near, nor boys. I was not hungry or tired or sick. This feeling was different. I found myself, myself grinning until my cheeks hurt, my scalp prickling till I thought it might lift off my head. My tongue ran away from me, giddy with freedom. This and this and this, I said to him. I did not have to fear that I spoke too much. I did not have to worry that I was too slender or too slow. This and this and this. I taught him how to skip stones and he taught me how to carve wood. I could feel every nerve in my body, every brush of air against my skin. I mean, so that should give you a sense of what her writing is like. Honestly, I am so attached to these characters already. I think for me, it's hard to like a character like Achilles who's so perfect and godlike, but I am starting to like him because he's dedicated to Patroclus who I just have a little soft spot in my heart for already. So I'm really excited to continue this, like really excited. And I'll update you guys either when I'm halfway or when I finish, I feel like this is gonna be a really quick read for me because I started reading this yesterday and I already got to page 110 um, in just like an hour or two. So I feel like this is gonna be super fast and I'm really excited about it. All right, talk to you guys later. Hello, so I am a little over halfway through the Song of Achilles and I'm really enjoying it. This world is brutal, like brutal, brutal. Um, some crazy shit is happening. But I, yeah, I really like it. I think in answer to the whole, is there gonna be feminist critique? I think that this isn't the novel for that. Maybe in Cersei, her other novel, there would be. Um, but I think that's just something I need to look into on my own because that's something I'm really interested in. This book is so, it's so sweet. The way the two of them feel about each other, Patroclus and Achilles, they, you can tell in very little small actions that they both really care about each other. And I find 
that sort of romance really sweet. I'm really enjoying it. Honestly, there's not much to report. So I'll tell you guys once I finish the book how I'm feeling about it then. Hello, I finished The Song of Achilles and I liked it. I liked it. I didn't, I wasn't like in love with it. Like I feel like a lot of people are but I did really like it. It did kind of make me cry a little bit at the end. I typically don't like books that have characters in them that are perfect. That's why I don't like, for instance, Sarah J Maas. I think some of her characters are a bit one-dimensional because they're like perfect. Um, but I did enjoy this more than I thought. Like I was worried that Achilles would be a bit flat and just like too heroic and for a lot of the book I felt that way about him but then towards the end you do start to see a little bit of his flaws and his shortcomings which I did appreciate because it made it him feel more human um the book was definitely well written it was very powerful yeah I liked it a lot I just didn't like love it like some people did and you know what that is okay I don't have to like love every single book that everyone ever is excited about you know and it can just be a good book and it was but now i can finally read <sighs> the final empire the first misborn book by brandon sanderson and i am so excited a little bit nervous because what if i don't like misborn like that seems like it should be impossible um but we'll see maybe i maybe i won't no, let's be hopeful. I probably will like Mistborn. I'm really excited about it. Even my dad likes Mistborn and he doesn't read fantasy stuff. So yeah, I'll let you guys know and give you guys a good synopsis once I've gotten a little bit into it. Hi, uh, so it has been a while um, because I moved back to the UK a couple days ago. So things have been a bit hectic. My place is still you know, a bit of a mess. I wanted to let you guys know that I'm about 150 pages into The Final Empire and I do like it so far. I'm not obsessed yet, um, but I'm hoping that that's gonna happen soon. Basically, The Final Empire is about this world where there is a Lord Ruler who rules all of the other Lords. <laughs> um, and it's, I think it's a serfdom. Is that what it is when there is like, a main lord and then there's all these other lords and they have like slaves and stuff so that's what this world is like and the magic system is really interesting basically you can use metal in your body to do different things and you can like swallow a solution let's say with metal in it um, a specific type of metal to do a specific type of thing for instance if you burn pewter which is burning is like what you do when you use the magic, you can make yourself stronger. So it's stuff like that. We have two main characters, two POVs, um, although they're both third person limited POVs, but one of them is Vin. She is a member of the Ska, which is a race of people that are enslaved and usually taken advantage of and exploited and done horrible things to, but she is actually, a thief and she has escaped i don't know if she was ever in slavery but she is like living undercover as a thief and then there's a guy named kelsier who's also a ska he's a thief as well but he's like a thief master like he's really good at it and he actually was imprisoned in this in these like big pits where no one is supposed to come out alive and he has come out alive and he has a big mission that he recruits vin for which basically to take over the empire. Um, it's really interesting. It's really good so far. So far it's been a lot of world building um, and just kind of getting our bearings. It is quite a chunky book. So, I mean, 150 pages in is like that much. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, Vin as a character is super interesting. She believes that like getting close to people they're just gonna betray you. That's cute and relatable. <laughs> um, but she and Kelsey are really like strong characters that, and I feel that like the characterization is quite good. And we're introduced to a whole cast of other characters who are going to help in our mission to like dethrone the Lord Ruler. 
So I'm excited to keep reading it. Sorry about my voice, it's a bit bleh because I've just been traveling so I'm a little bit sick. But um, yeah, that's Miss Bourne so far and I am really excited to continue reading it. So far, I think I'm worried that all of the hype is making me extra critical because so far I'm not like in love with it, but I'm willing to be swayed, you know? And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I'm not super emotionally invested yet, um, which will hopefully happen. So yeah, I will keep you guys updated, hopefully more often than I have been. <laughs> and hopefully I will continue reading this quickly because it's long and chunky. And I've been reading books for this vlog for a couple weeks now. Right, I'll see you guys later. Okay, hello. So I have just gotten back from this, my school study center because I don't have Wi-Fi yet. Ah, that is annoying. So I just sat there and like watched YouTube. Um, but I'm going to read some more of Mistborn tonight. Hopefully we'll give you guys an update. First, I'm going to make some bolognese and... Yeah, I have a cozy night in. My place is a little bit of a mess still because it's hard to get the motivation to move everything around. But yeah, that is what I'm gonna do. I'll update you guys when I have more to say on the book. So I've been reading a bit. I'm about 220 pages in and things are going good. I do like it. Um, I think my expectations I didn't really know what to expect, just like amazingness. Um, and I'm not feeling like it's like five stars yet, but the foundations that are being laid are solid and the world building has been good. I do like find the main characters likable. Um, so I'm just interested to see what happens. And I'll update you guys when I'm about halfway through the book. Hello, so I am over halfway done with Miss Bourne. I'm on page 412 and I am really enjoying it. It's not a five star as of yet. I'm not sure that I have that feeling with it, but it's very solid. Like I am, there's so much of it that I'm enjoying. So, so basically Rin, I mean, what am I saying? There's Rin who was in um, the Poppy War and then there's Vin in this book. Like, why are they so similar? Anyway, Vin has started to have to go undercover for like, like as part of the nobility. So she's trying to like pretend to be a lady, but really she's a street urchin. Um, and I'm loving that aspect of the book and the political intrigue. And it's looking like there might be a romance for her, but it's like, she has this whole other identity now and is he gonna fall in love with like the real her or the fake her and where where is that line so that part is really interesting i'm also just enjoying the general scheming <laughs> that is going on in this book like the planning of this whole takeover of the empire is so interesting because it's they're playing a really long game like it's like i mean to take over a whole empire in a year is like actually not that long I guess but it's like they are doing big things and I really love Kelsier and Ben I'm really liking the side characters like I'm getting a lot more into the characters which is really good and they're starting to feel like my little friends which is perfect like I was reading this the other night and I was like you know that feeling you get where you're reading and you're just like literally nothing else in the world matters because I am reading right now so nothing in the real world has any consequences not like things were going badly but like i was just like la di da i don't care about anything else other than reading it's fine and i love getting that feeling when i read i was just like sucked in so yeah i don't know if you can hear but it's like kind of raining out today and i'm so happy because it has been hot very hot i mean i'm still wearing a tank top but like it's just hot in here um but yeah finally raining and i will probably update you guys when i'm done with this i am really excited about the way it's going again not five star yet but i have a very good feeling about it and i feel like even if this book isn't other books in the series could be because i am really like 
loving where this is going. And it's really easy to read. I okay, actually one more thing. So the magic system in this book is really interesting. The lore is really interesting. Um, and I get the sense that there's like like what we've discovered so far about allomancy and the way that the magic system works is really interesting, but you do get the sense that like there's whole other things in the world that you don't even really know about. And it just seems like it's going to be really interesting to kind of explore that over the next however many books. I'm just really excited about it, really loving it, and I'll update you guys when I have finished it. And then that will be the end of this vlog. And I will have to take a break from fantasy probably. Um, although I love it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. So in the clip that you guys just saw, I got to go to Zadie Smith's bookstore, book tour is what I meant, um, to hear her talk about The Fraud, which is her new book, and I got a copy signed by her, and I got to like talk to her for a second. Um, that was really cool, and that was actually something I was able to do through the English department at my school. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. I need to read more Zadie Smith. I've only read like half of one of her books, but I lost interest. So that is not good. And it's something I want to remedy <laughs> um, because Zadie Smith is an amazing writer. Um, and I did like her book. I just wasn't like super interested in it at the time. And there were other things I wanted to read. Um, but yeah, so right now, oh God, I've just been in my house having such a lazy day. Like it's like three and I've not left the house yet. I'm going to go to the mall because I need to like do some stuff with my bank and then I'm going to go to Waterstones. So I'll bring you guys with me for that and I might get something because I have a little money on there. So yeah, that is that is the vlog update. Not anything to update you guys on for Mistborn because I've been busy and I haven't been reading it, but there's hopefully hopefully it'll be done soon <laughs> i have finally done it i finished mistborn today and it was good it was like a very solid four stars for me. Things I liked, I liked that the whole, I liked the whole fantasy plot line of it. I thought it was really solid and well done and like very clever. Obviously I've talked about how I like the magic system a lot in this book. I didn't so much like the writing sometimes. It was easy to understand, but then sometimes it felt a little bit unedited, but I'm sure that that gets better with his books as they go on. I think this is his debut novel, if I'm not mistaken. So it, I'm sure his writing improves massively over the course of however many books he's put out. So that's not really an issue, but I know this is a small thing and the book isn't like about the romance really, but there is a romance and it's just not very well developed. And I kind of think it would almost just work better as like a friendship because there's no like romantic tension there and the intensity of the feelings that we're supposed to believe that one character has for another character is not believable to me. So while I do find the characters like pretty fleshed out and very lovable, like I didn't find a certain, that certain relationship fleshed out. So I felt like I had a hard time believing that the two really cared about each other that much um but yeah I think that's like a small thing on the whole I loved it and I think I I know I'm gonna read the next one I, I had that feeling when I finished this one today like oh I want to pick up the next one right away I don't have it so I need to get it but um yeah very solid I think the books for this vlog were very like as a whole quite good, not great. I can see potential for Mistborn to get great as a series and I've heard really good things about The Burning God which is the third book in the Poppy War series. 
So I'm very excited to get to those. Um, and I'm really, I have hope for the top Poppy War. I have hope. I should be hopeful. <laughs> um, but I think I'm definitely, I'm definitely hopeful for Mistborn. Like this series, I can tell it's gonna get good. Like at the end, I was kind of glued to the book. So that's good. And the Song of Achilles was just like a beautiful little moment. I think the only reason I rated it so low or felt a bit disappointed was because of all the hype it has. But I think that's something that just like, it got in the way for me a little bit. Um, and I need to not let that happen. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this vlog. Um, I know it's probably a long, chunky one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed reading all these fantasy books um, because I love fantasy and I'm trying to get back into it as a genre. So this was a really fun kind of like challenge for me to read three fantasy books like in a row. But yeah, thank you for watching. I've already said that. Mm -hmm. um, leave a like if you like this video. Um, comment a dragon or a pirate emoji if we have those um because i there were no dragons in this vlog which is actually really disappointing but there there were pirates so we can do a pirate emoji and yeah subscribe if you like my videos i am trying to put them out more regularly than i have been in the past um, because I really like doing this. So yeah, I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!